Good morning, and welcome to Student Manager 101, Help and Communications. Sometimes after I say we're going to begin the recording, it seems like a long time uh, before the recording actually begins, and this morning that's the case. We have company today. Greg is with us, and Jason. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Yay, synchronized speaking. I love it. Uh, we're going to cover today uh, the Student Manager Help Guide and the forum. Jason's going to handle that for us. And social media. We're a little new to social media, so Greg's going to get us up to speed on that one. We're going to start with the Help Guide. And Greg, I'm going to turn it over to you. Make that happen. Once you go with it, all Let right. Me know when you have the screen, I, I I don't don't have the screen yet. I think you actually tossed it to me, Lori. Let me see. Sorry about that. I got I got it. Sorry about that. Yeah, I did. We got too many ace words logged on. <laughs> okay. Um, I have it now, I believe. Can yes, people do. see my screen? Sure can. Okay. Um, we're going to start with the help. And um, uh, I'm going to access it through the website. And remember, when you're in Student Manager, when you click Help, you now go out to our online help. Uh, in the old days, the help was built in. And we've now switched to online help, which is the new way uh, to be able to do uh, the help. It's how uh, Microsoft has set up their help. And um, I've now clicked into the help tree. And this is what you see when you go to help. And, and I've been in the industry a long time. Uh, for those that don't know me, uh, uh, I've got 17 years in continuing ed. I've taught. And uh, I've been a technologist for many years. Uh, Chuck just brought me on. And he's been pleading with me to come work for him for a while. And one of the things I always find people never use the help. And uh, the help is actually really helpful. And Cheryl has put a lot of time into this and uh, setting up the help to be very, I hate to use the word again, helpful. So let's take a look at how this works. Um, down the side of the screen, uh, you have the, the different contents of the help. So if I click on the Quick Start, you will see the different uh, areas of the Quick Start. And I can click on any of those and read those subjects. Now one of the things that's new in the help system uh, are these little arrows up here. And what it'll do is with whatever subject that you're in, so for example, we're in Quick Start, we can now go and navigate through all the subjects in Quick Start by just pushing those little arrows. Uh, those didn't exist uh, up until recently. Um, so you can navigate through by uh, clicking over here in the Contents pane. Or you can actually use the little arrows. Now, below any of these topics, I can come over here. Here's navigation tools. You'll see um, a link called Related Topics. So if you're trying to learn how to do something uh, and it wasn't quite what you were looking for, sometimes you can click on the Related Topics link and find uh, exactly uh, maybe a sort of another topic that matches. So we could jump over here and um, uh, and maybe find a related topic um, um, that's related. Now, one of the things I always like to show on help uh, is the screen layout. Uh, if you don't know about this, just learning this will, will be the, the magic bullet about help. The, the screen layout help, um, I'm going to ask this question. Uh, raise your, your hand. How many people know about this part of help? And Lori can tell me how many people raise their hand. Raise your hand if you know about the screen layout issue in help. Are there people to know about this, Lori? About 25% of our audience. OK. Some people know about this. That's awesome. So when you go in here and you look, this will show you 
all the different places on the screen, all the fields. And when you hover your mouse, it shows you the name, uh, the field name. So if you're trying to write a report or, or change your report, this is where you go to find the names. So you can go to any screen, and you're able to see by just hovering your mouse what the name of that field is. So that's kind of nice. The other thing you can do in the help section is you can go to browse, and that will let you browse through. Once again, uh, it's just a slightly different layout of the help. Uh, does that make sense to people? Any questions so far? No, not so far. We're doing pretty well. Okay. One last thing. Um, there's not much to tell about the help. Uh, if you go to the search up here, we can type in uh, what we're trying to get help on up in the search. And it will think a bit, and it will come back and bring up your search results, just like searching on Google. And um, sure, he says, as it sits there and twirls. And it will bring back a list of, um, um, of search results based on your query. So we have a lot of help on reports or in that, so that wasn't the, the most defined search. Uh, but if you look, uh, now we can go in and click right into the help that way. So there is help on almost every part of Student Manager, uh, so I would get in the habit of, of using it. I still use it uh, a lot. I've been using Student Manager for 15 years, and um, I spent a lot of time going, now how does that work? and coming in here and, and looking for help. So uh, uh, it works. So if there's not any questions, I'm ready to pass, pass the buck back. All righty then. Uh, do we have any questions? We'll give it just a minute, because sometimes it takes a second to get the questions from the brain to the fingers to the keyboard to the go-to webinar and then to me. So we'll just wait for a second and see if we have anything on the help. Cheryl really has done an outstanding job of the help. She updates it regularly, we should say that. Then sometimes I think she updates it every day. Uh, so she does an excellent job of keeping it very relevant. As soon as, yeah, as soon as there's new features, she uh, updates and puts help in about them. It's, it's almost a daily job. Greg, one more time, can you show us how to find the screen layout? Uh, once again, if you're in the contents menu, uh, there's actually the little book called Screen Layout Student Manager. So it'll always be when you first come into the help, you look for the book that says Screen Layout Student Manager. And then every screen is listed on here. And you just find the, find the screen you want, want <laughs> excuse me, find the screen you want to look at, and then you hover your mouse. Excellent. I think that'll take care of the two or three questions that we did have, so I think we're set now. So Great. we're ready to move on to forums. And for that, I'm going to turn it over to Jason. Okay. Jason, we should be seeing. All right. Let's oh. see here. I can get my presentation going. Do you guys see that? First slide there. Okay. So yes, as Lori said, I'm going to talk about our Aceware users forums. Uh, the forums were was a tool that we decided to create to help facilitate our users uh, to communicate with each other as well as the Aceware staff. Some things that you can do are obviously to communicate with other users like you to find out how they may be using the software, both Student Manager and Aceweb, uh, in different ways, different configurations. Um, you get specific content. So we have it separated into different categories where if you just want to look up student manager stuff or just want to look up student manager reporting topics, it's, it's categorized uh, in a specific way. So very helpful in that way. Um, one of the great features, I think, is that you can get software update notifications. So when Matthew posts a new build to student manager, um, and let's say we don't send out the, the big notification emails every time a new build is released, but when we put in something specific or a bug fix comes out, Matthew will make a post in the forums that say, hey, I just released this new build. 
um, here's what changed and here's how you can get it. So what you can do, and I'll show you how to do this um, a little bit later, but you can subscribe to those forums and you'll get an email as soon as one of those updates is released. So it's a great tool to get notifications on student manager and ACE web updates. The other big thing is our wish list. If you have an idea that you think is great and you would love to see that in student manager or ACE web, we have specific forums where you can go and make a post and it will go right to the right people to determine whether that's something, hey, that's a good idea, let's get that on the wish list so we can put that into a future bill. Okay, the forums are not a substitute for your ACEWARE technician, so we, we definitely recommend that you don't post um, requests for help. Uh, we're here for you in that regard, so if you have an issue or you're getting errors, things like that, call your technician. This is more of a communications tool uh, to network with other um, ACEWARE users as well as to, to talk with the ACEWARE staff, but definitely not for emergency help. So contact your technician in case your computer starts smoking or it's spitting out weird messages at you. So how do we get to the forums? There are a couple of different ways. If you go to our website, under the support link on the blue bar at the top, you can click on ACEWARE forums. And I'll do a shameless plug here. You, you can also access the webinar archive. So when this webinar is over and Lori gets it posted up, you can review that in the webinar archive. Thank you for the shameless plug. <laughs> yep. The other area is uh, also on that blue bar under customers, there's a link there, Aceware forums. OK, so I'll touch base briefly on kind of the structure of the forums. Um, when you get to the main page, you're going you're gonna to see the categories. So this orange box here surrounds this student manager category. Underneath that category, you have just student manager forums. So there is our category. In those categories, you have the actual forums. So here's where, if you want specific content, specific topics on just student manager reports or just ACE web best practices, that's where you would click. Specific content in those specific forums, in those specific categories. So it's kind of a tree structure on how that's broken down. Once you click into a forum, you're presented with the actual topics in that forum. And so, as you can see here, this is the student manager suggestion box wish list forum. Underneath that, you have the different topics. Underneath the topics, you have the actual post as well as any replies to that topic. So you can see it goes quite a ways down uh, in the tree structure, which, which lets you really narrow down and communicate on a very specific basis. There are a few different ways to navigate around the forum. Um, many of you may have seen this on different types of websites, where as you go farther in to the website, the, uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not. How do I do the little arrow? Yes, we can. Pointer. Oh, you can. Okay. Uh, go away. So you can see this sort of tree structure up here, where you know you start at the home page, and then it goes out, and you're at the board index. And then if you go into a category, and then a form, and then a topic, it's going to put links to each of those the deeper you go in. So if you wanted to go back one, you would just click back one category. You can also click the logo at the very top left. That's always going to return you to the very main page of the form. So if you just wanted to start over from the beginning, just click the logo, and that will return you to the main page. You've also got some tools up in the top right. The search box allows you to search for keywords or specific text in any of the categories or topics or posts or replies. Uh, you can also use the advanced search to narrow down, say, I only want to search for stuff in the student manager category. You can specify that, but you have to use the advanced search to do that. The other links up there are your FAQ. So if you have some questions just about general forum use, that'll be found in the FAQ. You can click the members list to see the other members of the forums that are currently signed up. And then there's your either log out if you're logged in, or this will show as register if you haven't registered or you're not logged in yet. Okay, so how do you register? So you haven't been to the forums before. You would access the link through our website under support, customers, click on ACEWARE forums. And then up in the top right, again, you'll see that register button. You click that. 
You're going to have to agree to some rules saying that you're not going to post spam or questionable content. Fill out the required information. It's going to ask you for your first and last name, the organization that you belong to, um, and then I believe an email address so that you can get those notifications and things. Uh, you submit that, and then within a very short amount of time, one of us here at the cabin will approve your account, and then you'll be able to post on the forms at that point. Always recommend that when you first register, go ahead and make a post, introduce yourself, and say who you are, where you're from, all that good stuff. Once you are registered and you have an account and you're logged in and you want to create a new topic, you navigate to the category and the forum that you want to post that new topic in. And then at the very top and at the very bottom of the page, depending on how many topics are already there, you may have to scroll down. Uh, but at the very top and the very bottom, you'll see that new topic button. You click that and it presents you with the, uh, the screen to, to create your new topic. If you just registered and you want to reply to a post that already exists, uh, much in the same way, when you're inside of a, an actual topic, you'll see a post reply button. So you click that and it opens up a similar screen where you can put in your subject as well as your text and things like that. Subscribing, and this is what I was talking about where if you want to get uh, you know, up to the minute notifications of updates to Student Manager and ACEWeb or just you want to have your finger on the, the pulse of what's going on on the ACEWeb forums in a specific category, you can subscribe to either that form or that topic and that will give you an email notification anytime anyone posts in a form that you're subscribed to or replies to a topic that you're subscribed to. So if you wanted to get notifications just on when Student Manager builds are released, you would want to subscribe to the topic that Matthew has created. Actually, I take that back. You would want to subscribe to the forum that Matthew has that says Student Manager Updates. So then anytime he makes a new topic in that forum, you get that email saying, because you're subscribed to this forum, this is your notification that a new topic has been created, or something to that effect. OK, and the last few things I'm going to show you are just some of the icons and what you would see. When you first navigate to the forum, everything is going to have these little red icons here. And that indicates that you haven't actually clicked into that post and read what it says. And this is handy because once you read something and then you leave the form and you come back later, uh, it's, it's nice to be able to have a visual representation of what you've already read and what's new. Um, so if you see a, a topic with the red icon, that means there's something new in there that you haven't read yet. Some of the other ones that you might see are announcements. That's going to be at the top of the forum, uh, so usually something important, a new release or a cruise that you guys should be looking forward to attending hopefully come next year. The other ones are sticky topics. They always just stay at the top of the forum. Again, they contain important information relevant to whatever category or forum that you're in. And if you see one with a lock icon, that means that you can't reply to it, but you can view it. So you can go into it and view it. And that is the end of my presentation. Any questions on forums, about the registration process, or anything like that? Jason, who sets the uh, who sets a topic that's locked, or if it makes it an announcement or a sticky topic? Those are done by the four moderators. All of the ACEWARE staff are four moderators, um, and we didn't really talk much about this, but there are certain forums such as the wish list forums to where when you go in, it will allow you to, to create your post, but before it actually posts it so that everyone can see it, uh, because it's a moderated forum, that means one of the ACEWARE staff has to actually go in and approve that post. And that's done because we get a lot of uh, items that people consider you know, to be wish list items, but that may just be uh, maybe there's a preference that you need to turn on that's actually already in the system, so it doesn't need to be on the wish list. So things like that are actually in a moderated form so that we need to approve the post before it be becomes public. Right. But yes, to create the sticky topics, lock topics, that's all done by the four moderators. All righty. I think you have done an excellent job. And we're going to turn it back to Greg for the social media. We're social media. You ready, Greg? Hello, Greg. Yes, I'm, I'm here. I forgot I'm muted. <laughs> <laughs> we wondered what happened. 
Oh, like the movie, a funny thing happened on the way to the forums. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there you go. So you should. Okay. People should laugh at my jokes, or I'll tell more. Um, anyway, uh, what I want to do, one of one of my tasks when I came on board was to put together uh, the social media part uh, and to pump it up a little bit. And so I want to go through and show you our different social media. Uh, pieces and um, tell you what we're doing with them and um, so that you know and can pick what you want to subscribe to and um, uh, just the different ways we're putting to communicate with you. Uh, one of the things we always are concerned around the cabin here is that we are communicating with our customers and giving you a chance to communicate with us. And there's so many different ways to do that now that um, you know, we just want to review that with the people uh, that are online here. So let's take a look. Uh, we're going to start with Facebook. We, we now have our Facebook page spiffied up a bit, and we're posting on a regular basis. Uh, if you go to Facebook and search for Aceware Systems, you'll find our, our page here uh, with the new timeline look. And you can subscribe or like us uh, and get our posts. And what we're using the Facebook page for is um, some updates, uh, status updates. You can, you can post your comments and that on here. And this is our casual site. Um, we'll be posting pictures from, uh, pictures from things like our crews. We'll be posting, reminding people there's updates, uh, hints and tricks, things like that. And you're you can post here as well if you want to share something or a new hot class. Um, you know how Facebook works, and this is our presence. So here's our fall leaves, for example, um, that are turned, and now in the last two days are almost completely gone because of the wind. Uh, I should have a before and after picture uh, with leaves and without leaves. So we now have our Facebook page, and it gets updated two or three times a week. Um, Another thing, another piece of social media we've got set up is our LinkedIn page, our company page. Uh, and for your programs, if you don't know about this, um, in the last couple months, uh, LinkedIn now allows you to have a company page. It, it used to be set for just uh, bigger companies. Now every company can have a, a page. Before, you could only have a, a group. And we have a group on here as well. Now you can have a page, and it's, it's like Facebook. What we're using our LinkedIn page for is uh, to share updates and things like that and information related to running your program. So we're, we're being more serious on this page and, and taking care of business. Um, one of my jobs is not only to share information about Aceware and our software, but also to share social media and business stories with you and how-tos. Uh, so we'll be doing a lot of that on, on our LinkedIn page. And uh, you can actually follow us on this page and comment and share information as well. Uh, once again, we're, we're not just trying to get information to you. We like to get information from you um, on various topics. The other thing we've set up is a monthly newsletter. Uh, oops, and looks like I've been away. I'm going to log back in here. If you haven't signed up for our monthly newsletter yet, you need to. Hang on here while I log back in. That's all right. Your your screen refresh is a little bit slow at the moment, so. We see you attempting to log in. <laughs> um, we've got a, a new uh, newsletter that we send out basically once a month. And what we're coming. going to do with, uh huh? It's coming. I can. We don't see it's it. loading. I'm going to click on a newsletter that we sent and then wait for it to show up on screen. Okay. There. I keep 
keeping an eye on the audience view bar to see if it turns green or not. Okay. So this is an example of our October newsletter. And what we're going to do with this is just share information that has been created uh, and is available to you um, in the last month. Matthew is writing a, a monthly article about uh, different features in Aceware, or excuse me, in Student Manager. We'll be sharing new links, new videos that have been created, um, uh, information about Student Manager, about our different programs, and just new resources and social media resources and whatever we've come across in the last month we're going to share with you. So whether you're a longtime user or a new user, uh, this is a, a great resource for you just to get a brief overview of what's going on uh, uh, related to student manager and running your program. Uh, we're going to share just a lot of information on here. Uh, you, can, you can sign up for the email newsletter. Uh, there's a link on the top of the Aceware webpage. It says newsletter, and um, you can sign right up. It's very easy to sign up and to uh, unlog or sign off if you don't want to receive it anymore. Uh, but this is going to be a great tool for somebody who's not into Facebook, uh, doesn't like a lot of contact, and just wants an update about uh, what's going on in that. So that's another social media tool that we've put into place and um, for sharing information with you. And lastly, uh, one of the things that I love to do and have been working on is our YouTube video channel. Uh, this is kind of exciting. Um, we now have a video channel on YouTube. Uh, if you go to YouTube and look up Aceware Video, you will see our channel and all our different videos. We have a, a whopping four, and I'm going to add two or three a month onto this list. So we have our webinars and that, but we're also going to create videos of how-tos on things that people are having problems with uh, or would like to know more about. So one of the things I'll ask you guys is if there's things you'd like to see a video to help people with, uh, to help your staff, uh, help yourself. Uh, I'd love to know what you're thinking and I will add them on to the list. One of the cool things, and I don't know if you know this, if you're YouTube junkies or not, um, uh, you can actually subscribe to this channel so that like our forums, anytime a new video is added, you'll get an email uh, that says there's a new video. These videos will also be linked into our website, so uh, they'll be on various pages in our website and linked into the help. So you may start to see videos when you click on a link uh, in the help file um, as, as we start to get an abundance of these. So we're trying to, once again, give you more options uh, for getting resources and help from us. So uh, anyway, is there any, any questions I should hear, Lori? Let's see, a couple people are saying that they would like to see the videos linked with the help guide. And Am that's, first? that's, that's we're already working on that as we have the videos. Uh, Cheryl is linking them right in. And we're actually, I think we're embedding them so you can watch them right on the help uh, in the web. And uh, so when you, you, you will start to see them pop up in the help. And people are telling me that they're going to the LinkedIn and signing in and doing what they should be doing on the LinkedIn page before they even leave the webinar. So. <laughs> you guys are awesome. And, and I would love to hear feedback. I would love to hear when you have a great class. Uh, uh, once again, the, the idea with social media is we should be, be sharing our successes and helping each other. And uh, I've got a lot of years with social media and in the industry, so I'm going to be sharing not only our, our student manager helping that with people, but uh, what I know as well. So uh, that's the goal uh, with these new, new social media pieces. Well, it so, sounds wonderful. So I think we've run long a couple of times. 
now we're going to run this a little bit quicker. We're going to be done a little early. So any questions, give you a few minutes. People saying they're happy to see we're staying in touch and staying current. And, and thank you very much for the compliments. We appreciate that. Um, anything else anybody would like to ask about? Greg, go over how you sign up for the newsletter again. There was a question on uh, how you do that. If you go to our website, uh, we've got right on the top of ASOR.com, we now have a newsletter sign up right here at the top of the page. And if you click on that, it'll take you to a little page here, put your email address in, and, and once you do that, the next page will ask you what are you interested in. And uh, it'll automatically enroll you in the newsletter. We're sending it out about once a month. I, I guarantee it won't ever happen more than twice a month, <laughs> uh, just because of the amount of work it takes. Uh, and um, uh, you'll automatically be on the list. All righty. I think that about covers it for now. Calling once, calling twice. Ah, we're going to go for one more question. Are the previous newsletters stored somewhere? Mm -hmm. You know, that's a feature we have access to. And um, uh, if there seems to be an interest to that, I, I will enable that so people can get the back issues. Um, it, it is something I can do. So maybe we should ask people if they're interested in being able to get those. We can make a new, uh, a new topic on the forums for archived newsletters, maybe. Yeah, I, I have the ability to do that. And uh, yeah, we, we'll look at doing that. I'm, I'm making a note now. A wish list item that may become a reality before the end of the day. By golly, we just like that sort of thing here. And I will take one last look at the questions. Folks saying that's a great idea. And we may call it. We're going to go ahead and we've been through the forums, we've been through the social media, now we're down to the point where we've taken questions, which is blowing through my slideshow here now. And we're ready for our final meeting of the Student Manager 101 series. Chuck will be back with us next week, October 31st, Halloween. Everybody wear your costume. 10.30 a.m. Central for codes. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It was a pleasure working with you. And Thank you. Post it as soon as you. Good job. Bye-bye, everybody.